All right, Shalom, Shalom. 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 All right, give us one second to check the feed. Shalom. Shalom. Right, this Shalom. Is great millstone Charlotte coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shab Bashem, Rakah Before we get started with this lesson, we want to give our honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shab Bashem, Rakah Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught us this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring in all truth and sincerity. To you, we say Shalom. 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 All right. So, as you brothers and sisters should know, all right, we are now in the Day of Atonement, all right, to the uh, uh, a solemn assembly, you know, a high holy day that our ancestors, you know, they kept to honor, you know, uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh What we are doing here is rehearsing the righteous acts, all right, by, you know, keeping the ancient custom that we have, you know, as remembrance of our culture, man, okay? So, you know, without any further ado, all right, we're going to hop right into it. And Lord willing, you brothers and sisters are edified. Con, I got that, Judges. Con, you got it. Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh, mm -hmm. even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord, Yahweh, go down to the gates. Yeah, it says, they that are delivered from the noise of the archers, which we know the noise of the archers is talking about how this place is going to be hit with those thermonuclear missiles, man. All right. It says in the place of drawing water, because as we know, America, all right, is the place of our captivity. All right. We are serving out our, uh, our slavery in this, uh, in this land here, man. Okay. But in the midst of our captivity, okay, and it says we are rehearsing the righteous acts. All right, as a, as our customs, as we have come back to the remembrance of, all right, being the Israelites, man. All right, we try to to the best of our ability, you know, uh, follow the law, statute, commandments that we, you know, were uh, were given as a covenant between us and our power. All right, we try to keep the high holy days, you know, to the best of our ability. But these are all tokens of our uh, of our obedience to Yahweh Bashim El Shah since being brought back to the remembrance of who we are as being the Israelites, man. Okay. So hey, like I said, man, with this um, this this day, you know, is, is a very particular, uh, special day for the nation of Israel because this day, all right, the Lord has set up for us to pretty much, you know, uh, be for it to be an atonement for our sins, man. Because as we know, all right, we have gravely, you know, uh, sinned against our power, man. Okay, and the Lord has afforded us a day that we were able to pretty much, you know, uh, reflect and ask for forgiveness. Okay, for everything that we've done against you, how about you now, Shah? But the most important thing, all right, because we know hey, we're not justified, all right, by the keeping of the law. It's also a remembrance of what Yahweh Shah did for the nation of Israel by him going up on the cross and shedding his blood, all right, for the nation of Israel as a whole. But uh, right now, mainly for the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All right, so as we keep this day, you know, the solemn assembly, all right, we also have to remember, you know, Yahweh Shai, you know, needs to be the forefront of what you're in remembrance of, man, because without his sacrifice, man, none of this would even be possible for us to do, man. I, I get the word. You got it. Con, it's the word for uh, atonement, and it says kapar, which it would be Yahweh kapar, the day of atonement. It's spelled uh, kapar ra, and it's uh, uh, palm the, mouth, the mouths of men, you know, because essentially going into um Yahweh Shah, you know, he, he represents that mediator, you know, so it's like he's covering the elect's mouth, you know, because we don't, you know, the elect isn't going to have, uh, we can't justify ourselves pretty much, and Yahweh Shah is, is mediating uh, uh, for the elect. I got uh, a little bit more, it says, it says, to make expitiation for an offender, to free him from charge, it says, to be covered, you know, and that's essentially what, uh, this day represents, you know, Yahweh Shah uh, uh, covering the mouths of men, you know, because 
again, we can't be justified uh, or we can't justify ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, his blood, all right, that was shed is, is the covering of our sins, man. Okay. So Lord willing, we're of the elect. All right. Yahweh Shah, right, he died for our sins, man. So we won't be held accountable. All right. When the judgment day comes, man. Okay. So, you know, just wanted to go into the actual, you know, scriptures detailing what, what we're supposed to be doing on this day, man. All right. So whatever, brother, you know, got that Leviticus, let's go. Okay. So Le <clears throat> Leviticus 23 and verse 27, it reads, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a, an holy convocation unto you, uh -huh. and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Right, and as as it says, this shall be a holy a holy convocation unto you, or a solemn assembly, in which it says that we afflict our souls and offer an offering by fire unto the Lord. So, as we know, we don't do any uh, animal sacrifices anymore due to Yahweh Shah and what he did, but what we do now is by uh, afflicting your soul is when you go on a, on a dry fast, man, okay, which is pretty much no no food, no water for 24 hours, man, from, you know, sundown to sundown, all right, and during this period, okay, you will afflict your soul, all right, by, you know, pretty much you coming to your house by Shem Shah in your pure state, because when you are fasting, all right, you are uh, pretty much afflicting your flesh, all right, to strengthen your spirit, and this is the perfect time for us to draw near to your how about she now shy and commune with him man all right during this period when you you know confess your sins to the lord you ask for forgiveness and you continue to uh, uh to build in the spirit man all right making making this this day all about the lord man all right so go ahead uh, if i could add real quick mm -hmm. um afflict in the free dictionary it reads to distress with mental or bodily pain trouble grievously but the point I wanted to get, it says to overthrow, to defeat, and to humble. You know, mm -hmm. so we're overthrowing what the the flesh, man, right? We're we're defeating the flesh and humbling ourselves down before the Lord, right, so that we can be more in tune with the Spirit. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you go on a fast, you know, it, it's pretty much you know uh, uh, putting the body, you know, to the test, man. Okay, because when you don't eat or you, or don't drink. You're literally, you know, uh, starving the body out. And like I said, when you're doing that, your spirit is, is becoming strengthened because now you are pretty much, you know, uh, coming to the Lord and you're you're approaching the Lord in a, in a humble state, man. All right. Yeah. Leviticus 23 and 28. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your power. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Uh -huh. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Uh -huh. And this is this is the uh, importance of us thinking on your house shot during this period, because as we know, it's going to say that uh, down to verse thirty-two. But pretty much, you know, we aren't supposed to uh, 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 work, you know, we aren't supposed to eat, drink, we aren't supposed, we're supposed to just focus this day all on Yahweh by Shema and Shabbat, but as we read in Judges, you know, this this is the land of our captivity, man, all right, so though, you know, we're able to, you know, acknowledge this day, all right, to the best of our ability, we're trying to keep it holy, but we know brothers have to work tomorrow, you know, some brothers are able to take off, but it's the, it's the, uh, the striving of doing the act is what the Lord is seeing, because Everybody that's, you know, uh, so-called black, Latino, Native American, majority of our people, they're not, they're not thinking on this day, man. You got a lot of Israelites that know the Israelites that's not even keeping this day, man. All right. So the fact that the Lord, you know, put the spirit on us to allow us to rehearse the righteous acts, man. And we, we have to, you know, be humble in that, man, because the Lord could have put the spirit on us. So we're not giving a fuck about today, man. You know? Exactly. Leviticus 23 and verse 31. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Right. So this is a, a, a solemn day, man. All right. This is, like I said, it's, it's a Shabbat, man. All right. So 
just as you would, you know, on any other Shabbat, man. You're supposed to keep, you know, the, uh, the Sabbath day holy, man. All right. So that means no sex. All right. No food, no water. All right. So dealing with just the day of atonement, manly. But, you know, you want to you want to do everything to please the Lord on this day, man. All right. So, like I said, the fact that we're able to do this, and that's a blessing in itself. But this is also a humbling for ourselves as well, because we're not able to fully keep the uh, 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 keep the day of atonement uh, uh, the way it was kept back then. Because it says we're supposed to, you know, make a sacrifice as we, you know, uh, afflicting ourselves. We know we can't do that now. All right, we we have no means to to you know uh, you know make a uh, uh, make a sacrifice, get the animal, you know, kill it and offer it to the Lord. We we can't do that. All right, so the fact that we're rehearsing the righteous acts, the Lord. He takes he takes delight in seeing Jake with the attempt. Okay. Yep. Hey, yeah, precept for you, priest. You got it. It's uh Sirach for Ecclesiasticus 14 and 11. It reads, My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. Mm. You know? So according to our ability, right, what can we do? We can we can practice in the affliction, man. Right? We can practice abstaining from, you know, different uh you know, deeds of the flesh, right, during this solemn time, you know, mm -hmm. some brothers can't help but work, but like I said, do according to your strength and give the Lord his, his due offering, man, so we give what we can because it's what uh, it's what's owed to you, how shot, man. Right, it's the attempt that really matters, man, okay, because like you said, you got individuals that, you know, aren't able to keep it, man, all right, for you sisters, some of y'all might be pregnant, you know, you may, you may not be able to keep the Day of Atonement like you, like you want to, but like I said, you still can, you know, give up your offerings to the Lord by prayer, man. You know, it's it's the mindset at the end of the day because we know we're not justified, all right? Even though we're keeping the Day of Atonement, we're still not justified by your one went into because, hey, we still filthy, man, all right? And the Lord, you know, he can easily, you know, charge us, you know, for our iniquities. But the fact that he, you know, he's long-suffering and he's allowing us to continue to, you know, uh, get back up and continue to try again, man. That's a blessing, man. All right? So the right. sacrifice that we're doing right now, mm -hmm. all right, we're making our bodies a little bit nice. Every man from his youth. It's kind of quick, priest up. Con, go ahead. Con, this is Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. It says the most high. Commit uh, Romans 5 and 8 says, but the most high committed his love toward us in that while we yet, while we were yet sinners, Hamashiach died for us, much, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, mm -hmm. so essentially, you know, again, go, going to, you know, how you, how was shot died for the elect first and foremost on, the, on this side, you know, because pretty much the whole nation went off, you know, so we're not uh, 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 going back to the point that we're not justifiable or we're, we're not, the, the Heavenly Father isn't uh, directly dealing with us, you know, he's dealing with us through Yahweh Shah. Going down to the point, it says, for if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to the most high by death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in the most high through our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. I want to get this word for atonement. And it says, it says, adjustment of a difference, reconciliation, restoration to favor. In the New Testament of the restoration of the favor of the Most High to sinners that repent and put their trust in the expiatory death of Hamashiach, you know, so essentially, you know, going back to, you know, why we uh, uh, observe, you know, the Day of Atonement, you know, by uh, essentially um, putting ourselves in remembrance to uh, the sacrifice of Yahweh Shah and how he's going to cover the elect sins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we need it. You know, this the Day of Atonement is, is needed for us, man, because... Hey, like you said, if the Lord, you know, really wanted to, he could he could do away with it because he's not he's not dealing with us right now because we're filthy in his eyes, man. All right. Did somebody get uh Psalms 130 verses three through six and then uh Isaiah 64 and 6? I got Psalms. Con, you go ahead. God, it says Psalms chapter 30, uh 130, mm -hmm. and verse 3. It says, If thou Lord shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Right, and, and nobody is the answer because we're all filthy in the eyes of the lord because we scriptures say who we have all you know fallen short 
you know, of the glory, roughly paraphrasing, man. So we're all guilty of sins, man, because even even if you have, you know, uh, Jake, which we've seen, you know, foolishly make statements, you know, such as how they, they keep the law perfect, which is essentially them saying that they're perfect, that they don't need Yahweh Shai, man. That's a bold-faced lie because at the end of the day, we've all sinned. And if it's not according to this life, all right, it's according to a different incarnation that we had before, man, you know, that we were, because we were here multiple times throughout the uh, throughout the earth, man. So at some point, we have all sinned. All right, multiple times, man. So we're all worthy of death, man. So the Lord really was to mark our iniquities, and we'd all be found guilty, man. Go to verse 4. Yeah, read down to uh, 6. Okay. Psalms 130 and 4. But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Mm -hmm. I wait for the Lord. My soul doeth wait, and in his word do I hope. Yeah, this is why uh, the scriptures you know, are known as a comforter. All right, when we read these scriptures, we're confident because we get the understanding that look, Yahweh Shai, all right, he his whole uh, uh his whole ministry is based around the reconciliation of bringing us back to the heavenly Father, man. So if we continue in the following of his teachings and continue to uh, uh strive for the mastery, then the Lord is gonna is gonna uh, pretty much you know deliver us, man. Verse six. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Right, because at the end of the day, a hey, Psalms 51, man, that whole chapter is, is a beautiful chapter to read for a day like today, man. But as it says, you know, verse uh, verses 10 and 11, all right, hey, we, we pray that the Lord, you know, keeps the spirit upon us, man, because with us being, you know, uh, uh, awoken by the breath, all right, we're the only ones really out here, you know, seeking the Lord in, in spirit and truth, man. All right, we we sincerely care about the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior did for us, man. But when you see, when you see the actions of other Israelites out here, they don't give a fuck about what the Lord did. They don't they don't count that as something to uh to to take you know uh, heavily, man. All right, they they look at it as light work, man. Which is why Jake still do do the bullshit they do, man. All right, once again, this is why the Day of Atonement is needed. All right. Can I get this definition for you, Bruce? You got it. This is a, a tone in the Edelman Dictionary. It reads, to bring at one, to reconcile, and thence to suffer the pains of whatever sacrifice is necessary to bring about a reconciliation. You know, and that's what we're going through right now. Right? We understand this is a light suffering, man. Right? Mm -hmm. to, to not eat or drink for one day. Right, so imagine how you, how the suffering you, how Shai went through right on the cross. You know, it can't be compared, right? right? So what he did to allow us access back to the Heavenly Father, right, this is what we, we should be, you know, uh, you know, extremely grateful for, man, to have immense gratitude, you know, during this time because it's giving us that access to uh, salvation, man. Yeah, because, hey, what we're doing as, as pretty much, you know, matter of fact, get, uh, Romans uh, 12 and 1 real quick just to add to what you were saying because what we're doing right now, man, is is very light compared to what Yahweh Shai did for us. Like you said, man, the, the 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 amount of time that he had to suffer on that cross, even leading up into the cross, man, because you, you just imagine, all right, you, you living your life, all right, knowing that you're going to die, man, all right? And, and he, had to, he had to walk with that pretty much throughout his whole ministry. That's why it, the the last uh, couple hours before the crucifixion, man, you know, he had his uh, his hour of testing in the Garden of Gethsemane, and pretty much, you know, he was asking the Lord, you know, if there'd be another way, you know, let him know, and he was to the point to where he was sweating blood, man. All right, that's how stressed he was, man. You know, so the fact that he still was able to go through with the the task the Lord gave him, and he came out victorious on the other side. This is something that we we have to remember and think upon every day, man. Not just today, but this is something you should be thinking about every day, man. All right, because without that sacrifice, without the, those uh, those hours of excruciating pain the Lord went through, all right, we would not be able to to be where we are today, man. Uh, this is uh, Romans chapter twelve and verse one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto the Most High, 
which is your reasonable service. Right. We are presenting our bodies as, as living sacrifices because even though we don't, we're not physically going through what Yahweh went through as far as us being crucified, but the fact that we are, you know, actively every day, all right, you know, uh, dying, you know, in this world's eyes, all right, to pretty much, you know, gain Yahweh Shai, man, that, that's, you know, giving us brownie points in the spirit with him, man, because he sees that we're actively trying to get right, man, all right? But we know, as we as we read in that, uh, matter of fact, before we uh, finish that out, let me get to uh, Isaiah 64 and 6 so I can finish my point. Kind of Isaiah 64 and 6, it says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and now all our, 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 and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Right. So like I was saying, man, hey, we, we present our bodies as, as living sacrifices because we know hey, we, we are all worthy of death, man. All right. We have all done things that we are worthy to be put to death for, man. Our brothers have committed adultery, brothers that have defiled their bodies, brothers have done all type of unimaginable things that, that will piss the Lord off, man. All right. But at the end of the day, hey, the Lord, it, 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 he still is forgiving us, man. All right. Because we're of the elect. He has forgiven us, man. Okay. So we have to continue to, to move knowing that, look, the Lord did, he did this for our sake, man. All right. He went upon that cross to, to forgive the, the elect sin. So if we are of that number, our sins are covered, man. All right. So this is just another token of our appreciation by, you know, afflicting our, our souls like this, man. All right. This, this is light compared to what the Lord did, man. But it's still the effort that like, I'm going to keep saying the Lord is taking note on, man, because this is millions of Israelites out here that know that they're Israelites and they're not keeping the uh, they're not keeping the day of atonement they're not keeping the passover they're not you know doing the things that the lord requires us to do man all right uh, uh, may i get something right quick for you brother go ahead you know the brother priest i'm one is making a beautiful point you know it's the attempt that's that's counted you know the attempt goes a long way in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, because the attempt, the effort is showing for ultimately your obedience to the Lord. Okay? Got a quick precept. 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And Samuel said, Hath Yahweh has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Mm. Okay? So as the scriptures was read, in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, we now present our bodies as that living sacrifice, okay? Holy and acceptable, right? Being made separate. And when you're separate, what are you doing? You're following the commands of the Lord. You're being obedient to the best of your ability because we're in captivity, man. The Lord has made provisions for his elect. Lord will only be a part of the elect to where he's just looking for effort and obedience, man. Okay, we have a mediator in the heavens to account for our faults. Yeah, and that's why you gotta hey, strive, you know, to the end, man. Okay, put your put your all in your how about you now, Rashad, man. All right, and that's that's what's gonna be your saving grace, man. Cause look, we as I keep mentioning, we are all you know worthy of death, but knowing that you can't be condemned with that, cause you do got you got spirits out there that's even you know uh moving in that, you know, man. I, I done done a lot of wicked shit in my life, man. And I don't feel like the Lord wants me. You know, brothers battle them demons, man. You know, uh, am I a man of the Lord? You know, am I doing whatever, you know, bullshit thoughts be coming to your head from these, these demons and Satan, man, you know? But you got to always remember at the end of the day, look, if you are of the elect, Yahweh shall die for your sins, man, all right? Could you get um Isaiah 51, or it's like a 59 and 1? Come on, this is a... get uh, Job 9 and 29. Because Isaiah 59 and verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Right, and this is why at the end of the day, man, we constantly, you know, have to remember that, look, Yahweh Shai, he, his name is, is that exactly, man. Yahweh Shai, he is the deliverer, man. He delivers, man. And what is he delivering us from, man? Our sins, man. That's literally why the Father sent him down in the flesh this, in this last incarnation, man. All right, to, to right the wrong that he did you know, uh, in, in the incarnations as Adam and Solomon, man, okay, because hey, both of those, uh, both of those falls 
has affected us deeply in this life, man. Okay? Because as you know, the curse of Adam, it goes into how we have to pretty much, you know, work, you know, we, we work, you know, uh matter of fact, somebody get that real quick, Bob Shot. Till the ground. Yeah. Got you. This is uh Genesis. Genesis chapter three and so I get so I got it right here. Um No, it's not it. Three and okay, I got it. Uh, three and, uh, is it verse 17 or 19? Uh, start from 17, see what it says. God, it says Genesis 3 and 17. It says, And unto Adam I said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh -huh. And sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Right. So starting with that, okay, because when you when you read it, Adam technically didn't sin. Okay, he wasn't the one that sinned, but because he took part in the philosophy that Eve brought to him, all right, that's what caused us to pretty much fall, man. Okay, because as the man, as the as the leader, all right, he was supposed to you know snuff that out. All right. Any, any, you know, wickedness was supposed to get snuffed out because he was he was the head. But because, you know, he followed after Eve, Eve was the one that transgressed, man. And like the scriptures say, through her, we all die, man. All right. But this this is what we see even prevalent amongst, you know, uh, our people in the world, man. Falling behind the damn woman, man. You know, instead of falling after Yahweh. All right. Like how we were supposed to, man. You know, go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Right. So because of that, uh, because of you know Adam's transgression, all right, the earth essentially became cursed, man. Because but prior to that, you know, the earth pretty much will yield its own fruit. All right. But now we have to till the ground, man. And and through that, as we continually fail away from the Lord, generation after generation. We see the earth in the current state it's in today, okay? Like you read about in, in uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, man. All right, creation growing up until the manifestation of the, of the sons of God, roughly paraphrasing, man. So the fall of Adam, and then you go into King Solomon and his fall, man, all right? We know that the, the, the kingdom split into two, all right? And then from that point on, all right, our people got worse and worse throughout the generations, even, even more so, man. So these two, you know, uh, things is reminders of what we've done to the lord and show how much we've messed up man okay because the law was perfect you know it wasn't it wasn't the law's fault it was us the fault lied in us man and somebody know what that's at bible should i grab that too but that's that's where we have to come to realization of where we where we messed up at man okay and when you acknowledge that as it says and uh i'll grab this while your brother's looking for that um this is hosea chapter 5 verse 15 it says i will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction they will seek me early and this is this is what we're doing man all right we're seeking the lord all right which should be an everyday process but today is is a is a great day to reflect on our uh our our missed our misdeeds man all right how we how we fell short man and this should be a, a catapult coming out of the day of atonement for brothers to you know get back on the right foot man all right brothers to get get yourselves back in in, in, the, in the spirit that you know you're supposed to be in and, and move accordingly man all right get that fire you know back uh, uh back hot man because and we can see through everything that's going on man the lord all right he's not playing with our people man all right jake is getting off like crazy man you know the, these judgments that's been going out right, the way the lord has been visiting the earth man we can tell we ain't got much longer man you know, so it's imperative as we continue to uh, 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 get close to that great and dreadful day that we get ourselves together even more with the Lord, man. You know, we're both able to find that scripture. You talking about Romans eight? Uh, what you got? Uh, 
I saw from verse two is Romans eight and two. It says, "For the law of the spirit of life in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that was weak through the flesh, the Most High sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit." Come on up. That's a good one. Uh, I think it was another one that I was talking about, but that's that's still a good one though. Um, read it back, but read it back from the top though. Okay. Romans eight and two, it says, "For the law of the spirit of life in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai hath made me free from the law of sin and death." For right. what the law? Was that was that verse one? Two. Uh, go back to one. Okay. Uh, Romans eight and one. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them. Which are in Hamashiach Yahawashai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right. And this is this is why at the end of the day, Yahawashai is so crucial, you know, for our walk, man. Because if we are in the spirit of him, okay, there is no condemnation. This is why and we have hope. Okay, this this is what set us apart from the rest of this world, man. Because with our uh, our faith in Yahweh Yahawashai, man, all right, we have a chance of salvation. This is what we're striving to uh, to change for, man. Go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we know that hey, the penalty for breaking the law is death, man. So, as as you uh, mentioned earlier, as far as we're not justified, all right, by uh, by our works according to the law, we're justified by our belief in Yahweh Shai, man. So He freed us from the uh, you know, from the the penalty of the law, man. All right. So now, as we you know continue to move in this faith. All right, we know we're gonna fall short, man. All right, truth to tell you, a righteous man falls seven times, but he get it back up, man. Roughly paraphrasing. So, even even in our faults, man, Yahweh Shah is still covering us, man. Yep. Because I want to add too, you know, Yahweh Shah is the one that allows for us to keep going in the spirit. Right. You know, like you said, priest. You know, quoting the precept that talks about how the righteous man falls seven times and get back up. The Lord is what allows us to keep that fire going, mm -hmm. you know, through his will, through his sacrifice. We have the ability to continue forward. Huh? Mm -hmm. And we have to be thankful for that because like the brother priest was saying, you should look at the state of the world right now. It's torched. Huh? We have no other direction. The Lord has put us into the straight. And if we have our senses exercised and we see what's going on in the spirit, we have nowhere else to turn. That's right. We have to make proper we have to make proper uses of our time and proper uses of this of this ability of Yahweh Shai, you know, reconciling us to the Father and atoning for our sins, man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's why you keep the Lord on the forefront. You can't focus on, on your uh, on your sins, man. Because that'll destroy you. Because if you if you literally just sat and just thought upon our the wickedness that we've done, and that will consume you. All right, because I, as I keep mentioning, man, we 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 are in the flesh, man. We we're going to fall short, man. All right. Matter of fact, speaking on that, let me get uh Romans eight. Go down to where it says um, pretty much the creature was made subject to vanity. You want? Can I, can I get something right quick for you, priest? Go ahead. Uh, Second Ezra sixteen and seventy six. It says, "In the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts." Hey, so lucky is go to 75. Come, come. Uh, second Ezra 16 and 75 is or 75. It says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For Yahweh Bashim Shai is your guide. Right. So at the end of the day, like I keep I, I said, man, keep Yahweh Bashim Shai at the forefront, man. Okay, don't don't doubt, don't don't be fearful at the end of the day. If you believe in the Lord truly, like you say you do, man. Let the Lord guide you. All right. If you stumble, get back up and keep moving, man. All right. Your 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 goal should be focused on the end, man. All right. The end goal, which is what the kingdom. All right. What are we doing this for at the end of the day, right? We're trying to be saved. So you got to keep the Lord, you know, uh, as as your uh your guiding light, man, and allow Him to guide you to the kingdom, man. Exactly. And if I may add to you, priest, you know, a guide is somebody who shows you the way to something. Which means yeah. they've already been there, right? Yahweh Shai has already walked this path. He's already finished his course, you know? So in us following him, us, you know, keeping our focus on him, he's going to be able to 
you know, maneuver us through, you know, all sorts of perils, you know, in these times to come, right? He's going to allow us, you know, that access. He's going to be able to show us the doors, right, to, to everlasting life, man. You know, that's yeah. the only way we can get there. Because think about it, you know, Yahweh Shah, he had knowledge of all his past incarnations, man. So if he was if he was to take on the spirit of like how we're saying the world looks at it, he knew he fucked up. He knew he fell short as Adam. He knew he fell short as Solomon. And he could have held that over himself, man, but he knew at the end of the day he had a mission to complete, man. You know? Just like we do. So we gotta continue, you know, on, on our walk as well, man. Kai to you. Go ahead. Kai, this is Ephesians chapter uh 15 or chapter 5 verse 15 it says see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil and which you know ultimately bros is going into you know keeping the lord at the forefront and prioritizing the lord you know so that's essentially what the elect is doing let me get an nlt and it says make the most of every opportunity in these evil days you know and that's essentially what the elect is doing you know i'm gonna go down to verse 17 it says wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, you know, and essentially what the elect will be doing in these days is rehearsing the righteous acts and, and, and trimming those lamps, which, which represents, you know, uh, bidding themselves to the marriage and uh, ultimately preparing for the Lord or the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. You want me to get that, Romans? Uh, talk, talk about when you can finish out first, then we'll get it. Second, there's 16 and uh, 76, it says, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith Yahweh Bashimel Shai power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, man, this is the perfect time for you to confess your sins to the Lord, man. All right? Hey, unburden yourself, all right, from, you know, uh, the thing that's weighing you down, man. You know, because if you if you let if you let your sins pretty much, you know, continue to to you know be your focal point all right you're not going to make it in this truth man all right the, the world will consume you and that's ultimately what satan that's what his job is when you read when you read about that you know when the lord told him that look satan desires to sift you man that that's that sifting you know the inward agitation that some of that goes into that man but because yeah, brothers like i said brothers deal with thoughts like that man all right man am i truly a man of the lord man it, is the Lord really dealing with me? Is the Lord, you know, going to forgive me for what I've done? You know, hey, we we battle those thoughts, man. But you can't allow those those uh, sins to to weigh you down, man. You know. Sure. Uh, bro, come back. Uh, I'll pick up on you. Yeah, read uh seventy seven, and we'll go to uh, your one. Uh, what chapter was it? Uh, Second Ezra 16 and 77. No matter of fact, I'll read it. You're good. Okay. Um, verse 77, it says, Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their inequities, like as a field is covered over the bush, over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man can travel through. Because, like I said, though, if you if you allow that to pretty much, you know, uh, uh, weigh you down, man, that'll it'll pretty much, you know, uh, It'll block your walk, man. All right. It'll cause you to stumble and eventually, you know, fall out the truth, man. And, and we've seen it. We've seen examples of guys that, that you know, didn't allow Yahweh Shai to, to cover their sins, man. All right. They they dwelt on the things they did to the point to where it made them, you know, give up. Okay. Like I said, if Yahweh Shai truly, you know, uh, died for our sins, man, then we're going to make it, you know, and we, and we have to believe that because, this this whole thing would be uh, invalid if that wasn't the case, man. All right, and I got a real quick one before uh, you got to go on. This is um, Job chapter nine verse twenty nine. All right, this is what you got to remember. It says, "If I be wicked, why then I labor in vain?" You know, and that's that's what you have to think about. Look, if the Lord, you know, wasn't dealing with you, all right, if you were slave to be destroyed, you know, if if, if you know. Whatever thought that you that you come across that makes you you know uh, weak in the spirit, man. All right, look, you lack faith. Look, why would the Lord still have you around doing the work, calling upon His name? All right, because He has a purpose for you, man. Yahweh Shah obviously is dealing with you, and that's 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 how you combat those demons, man. All right. Sorry, God. Can I get something right quick? Yeah, I got it. 
This is uh John three and eighteen. Red lady, how was shy? Start seven. Start seven. You got it. You want to speak on? Well, I'll, I'll read it. It's uh, John three and seventeen. For the Most High sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Right, because this world has pretty much rigged our people's mind to be defeated. Right, this world has rigged our people to have a death mindset to where they don't really look at the victory. The victory is far-fetched because our people have been beaten down for so long. But the Lord is the one that's offering this restitution. The Lord is the one that's offering this healing. The Lord is the one that's offering an atonement in a world of darkness that has not offered you anything, man. That's right. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Mm -hmm. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. Right. Your, your, your faith in Yahweh Hashem Al Shai is paramount, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, Ephesians, the second chapter, speaks about how faith is a gift, and that gift is to be toiled, is to be is to be furnished, and it's supposed to uh, increase over time. Second Peter's the first chapter speaks on that, man. Huh? Okay. Because without that faith. You're going to be overtaken by the wiles of the devil. Okay, that's why Peter said in that chapter, 2 Peter, the first chapter, that if you do these things, when he was speaking about the, uh, the, the, the things to add unto your faith, you shall never fail. Okay? Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Yeah. Verse 19, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, mm -hmm. because their deeds were evil. Right, and you got to confess your faults to the Lord, man. As the brother priest was saying, now is the time that you just be real with the Lord. Every day you should be honest with the Lord, but especially in an opportunity as such as today, every day, we got to show forth that, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You need to show forth that repentant spirit, man, that remorseful spirit, and just be honest and look, and look to Yahweh Shai. As that one that's going to save you, man. Because we can't save ourselves. Right. Verse 20. <clears throat> For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And that's a poor mindset to have, man. That's a defeated mindset. <clears throat> to where you don't want to accept the Yahweh Shemel Shai because you have to come and do what? Repent and believe in this gospel, which is going to call for you to change for the better. Right? It's going to call for a need for an atonement. It's going to call for a need for reconciliation when you confess your faults, when you come to the light. And unfortunately, a lot of our people do not want to do that, man. Yeah. And that's, like I said, either they're, they're bogged down by what they've done, they think they're too far gone, or they're just straight up, you know, wicked, man. But, you know, for the sincere believers out there, this is what Yahweh Shah came for, man. You know what yeah. Uh, verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they were wrought in the Most High. Right, and this is how the Lord works through us, man, right? When we acknowledge our sins and we repent, okay, we turn back to the Lord and we offend less, okay? We learn the things that are pleasing unto the Lord, and we strive to do the best that we can, again, as we discussed throughout this entire uh, epistle, is that we understand that our righteousness is as filthy rags, but we show forth our faith and our works. We show forth our belief in Yahweh Shai, and we understand that He is who He is. He is the Savior. He is the one that was sent forth to be the mediator, to be the one to bring about the remission of sins, okay, to blot out our sins and transgressions, okay? And in this day of the of the atonement, we, we focus on Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. We give thanks to Yahweh for sending Yahweh Shai to offer that atonement, man. So yep. Kyle, you got your one. Kyle, this is Romans chapter eight and verse twenty. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Mm -hmm. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. 
right so when you get an understanding on why the lord allowed this uh to happen like this all right it was to pretty much you know make us rely on your house shot man okay because hey as we're going to keep mentioning it, even though we are keeping the day of atonement to the best of our ability we're not justified by it just like we're not justified by the law but by our faith in yahweh shai man all right so the story was written like this to give yahweh shai his glory all right but like i said to make us you know put our all into yahweh shai and to see his importance in this thing man you know because he's going to be the one to restore all things to the way that it was man Keep going. Uh, you say anything else? Well, that's pretty much the point. That was it. Okay, Khan. Now that's uh, that's it on that one then. Um, Grace. Go ahead. It's uh, Romans 5 and 20. It reads, I'll read the NLT. The Most High's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. Mm. But as people sinned more and more, the Most High's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now the Most High's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with the Most High as a, and, and resulting in eternal life through Yahweh Shai, the Mashiach, our Lord. You know, so that wonderful grace, that abundant grace, is through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, man, right? That sin was established so that people could understand no, uh, or the law was established rather so that people could understand how uh, wicked and sinful this flesh is, man. But Yahweh Shah's sacrifice uh, gave us remission for our sins, man, and allowed us that connection back to the Heavenly Father, man. Yeah, because as we know, man, this this flesh, is, it, no matter how righteous you try to be, bro, this, this flesh is going to go off at some point, man. All right? Uh, could you get Romans 7? Uh, the part we're talking about, you know, the, the things that I don't want to do, I do. Um, start, at, start at 14 and read down to like 18, 19. Yeah, just read down. Yeah. So Romans 7 and 14, and in the uh, blue letter it reads, the, the conflict of two natures. Yep. It says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Mm -hmm. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that, it's like, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Right. So in this flesh, it's a constant battle between the, the flesh and the spirit, man. All right. So the things that we want to do, we don't do. All right. Because, hey. At the end of the day, we don't actively want to go off, all right? But this world is so fucking wicked that sometimes it'll get the best of the flesh, man, all right? And the thing and, and the thing is that you want to do, you don't do. Because, look, if, if we could be in the spirit more than what we, what we are, hey, we would do it. But as we know, you have your daily lives, you got work, you got your family, you got things you got to take care of. And it, it might take precedence over what you want to do because, hey, we... We, we would want to do more videos. We want to go out and camp more. We want to fellowship more and just be more in the spirit with the Lord. And hey, you have a routine in the spirit, man, that you, when you're on this routine, hey, your spirit is, is one with the Lord. But then some, some shit that happened with the flesh to make it to where you get thrown off. And now you're, you're, you're all the way out of whack, man. You know, right. the spirit of the Lord, you feel like, man, it, it's not on me right now, man, because this, this flesh is weighing you down, which is why. The Day of Atonement, you know, is a, is a beautiful day to get back on track. And don't just wait for the Day of Atonement to fast, man. Fasting is one of the the, the uh, weapons that we have been given to fight in this truth, man, you know. So as, as, as it says, man, um, pretty much the, the one of the best ways to, you know, get demons off of you is to pray in the fast, man, all right? So this shouldn't just be a one, uh, one thing a year type thing, man, all right? Hey, and there's multiple type of fast, man, but the most powerful type of fast is a, is a day of atonement fast, which is a, a, a completely dry fast for 24 hours, man. You know? Right. Romans 7 and 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it, that it is good. Mm -hmm. Now then it is no more me that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Right, because this flesh is sinful, man. All right? And it's, it wants to it wants to play, man. 
All right. It wants to do things, which is why you constantly have to keep your flesh under subjection, man. All right. You got to deny yourself sometimes because if you if you just, you know, giving in and allowing the flesh just to continue to get what it wants, man, that's what that's what allows these demons to take you over, man. All right. So this is why you constantly have to, you know, uh, uh, give the spirit, you know, it's time. But then, you know, you have to give the flesh time. Uh, it's time too. this is the balance of this life, man. All right. You can't be 100 percent in the spirit because you'll burn yourself out. But you can't be 100 percent in the flesh either, because if you are 100 percent in the flesh, like I said, these demons will eventually take you over, man. And you'll fall out the truth, man. Right. Romans 7 and 18. For I know that in me, it's like, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Mm -hmm. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Which is why we need Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Because Yahweh Shai pretty much, you know, he's going to, uh, he, he's going to change us from these vile bodies and he's going to give us a new body, which we'll be able to keep the laws perfect. Like we desire to, man. Right. Cause they, they say every day is a constant fight for us to try to, you know, to the best of our ability, you know, show the Lord that we believe in and, and, you know, keep the law. But we understand that due to the present situation that we're in, man, that's not possible. All right. Cause Hey, anybody that's saying that they're justified, by the law is a fucking idiot because scriptures even let you know a foolish thought is a sin against the Lord, man. Right. So you have to, if, if you really sat and thought about the severity of keeping the laws, bro, there's no way we'd be justified, but we are through. So Yahweh Shah being the propitiation for our sins, bro, this, this is why he is worthy to be praised, man, because he is our way out, man. All right. right. Uh, Romans 7. Well, you can get that first. Come. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. It's for you, please. Mm -hmm. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right. So watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. This is prayer and fasting, or like I said earlier, your two greatest weapons in this walk, man. All right. Utilize them, Jake. You know, hey, Apostle Ricard is, is, is a, you know, a, a major you know, uh, uh, advocate for brothers praying because that's a problem with a lot of Jake's out here is Jake don't pray enough, man. Jake's not fasting. And this is why Jake ends up getting taken over in the spirit. This is why Jake be, be doing a lot of stupid shit because they're not praying, man. All right. You get proud because you're not praying. All right. You get disenchanted because you're not praying. All right. You get lazy because you're not praying. All right. You're not doing videos because you're not praying. You're not, you're not being in the spirit, man. All right. Because you're giving the flesh too much time, man. All right, so as it says, man, you're supposed to be watching as well as praying because those two things keep you in the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, and that's what gives you the strength to continue to fight off the flesh, man, because you constantly remind yourself of what this walk is about, man. That's right. So back in Romans 7 and verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Mm-hmm. Now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more me that do. So like there's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Right, and this is why I said, you know, earlier in the lesson about how you you're not supposed to dwell, you know, on your iniquities, man, because your flesh inherently wants to sin. Because in this life, sin is, has been made, you know, acceptable. All right, sin has pretty much been made to where it's the norm. All right, and if you constantly you know uh, uh moving in the flesh man you're going to go off because this is what the flesh wants man all right it it, it yearns for you to, to break the dietary law all right it yearns for you if, if you are on your every day man and you see a woman and you know she has a man you still want her, man all right it, it yearns for you to do anything against what the law says because we live in a society that we were raised up to to break the lord's laws man okay so we understand that when we do, you know, fall short, it's not actually us. It's the flesh, man, you know. But the spirit, which has been renewed in us through Yahweh Shai, all right, has pretty much, you know, been uh, uh, pretty much made to where we're not supposed to be condemned because our spirit, if we are in Yahweh Shai, all right, we have been, you know, uh, uh, pretty much pardoned, man, you know. That's right. Romans 7 and 21. I find then a law that when I would 
when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. Right. So we desire to 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 do, you know, what the what the scriptures say, what we uh, the law says, commandments, you know, speak of, because that's in our spirit, man. If we're of the elect, we innately want to keep the law, man. All right. But at the end of the day, it's a constant fight, man. But what keeps us on the uh, you know, on the up and up is that. Yahweh Shai gives us another day to, to do better, to be better, you know? Okay. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Yeah, like, like I said, this world wants you to, to, to go off, man. And when you go off, you're rewarded for that, man. All right? God, that's why the scriptures say that in Isaiah 5 and 20, woe unto him that call the evil good and good evil. Right? We understand that this devil, the spirit that is within him, is not upright pursuing a Habakkuk 2 and 4. He set the society up backwards. Right? He's esteemed unrighteousness as the the meter in which people should operate and live in. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of this the society, as the brother priest is talking about, is designed in a way to where it's going to cause you to go off. You know. The food that you consume, the clothes that you wear, right? Brothers having to work on the Shabbat. Yeah. This brother, this 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 system literally puts you in positions to die according to the law. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is the beauty of, of the truth because the Lord gives you chances to get back right, though, man. To pick yourself back up, to dust yourself off, and to continue on walking, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Romans seven and twenty four. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And and that's all, you know, thanks to Yahweh Shai, man, that we have a way out of this bullshit, man. Uh, verse 25. I thank the Most High through Yahweh Shai, the Mashiach, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of the Most High, but, in the, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Right, which is why hey, we're we're completely thankful to Yahweh Shah all right, for that uh that, that second covenant, man. Okay, because through that new covenant, it's that second, it's like the new covenant that you know is gonna pretty much, you know, uh be when we are changed, the laws that we innately want to keep in our spirit, we're gonna be able to keep, you know, in the flesh when we're changed, man, into those new bodies, man. All right. So Yahweh Shah is, is pretty much, you know, Allowing us to to pretty much you know do this spiritual training to get ready to inherit those new bodies so where we fully will be able to keep you know these uh these law statute commandments to the best uh to you know perfect ability in that day man. Hey Shalom on the Quran, Yahba Shimon Shabakata. Hey Shalom Akim Yahba Shim Shabakatum. Yahba Shim Shabakata. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. Man, you got a priest, I'm gonna jump in with you. Kind of, kind of, yeah. We just uh finishing up Romans seven, like I said. We just going into you know day of atonement, spirit, you know, constant reminder of, of what Yahweh Shai has done for us, man. That's it. You know, his sacrifice. You know, the, the, what he did for the nation, starting with the elect, the importance, you know, the significance, uh, the intensity, man. You know, um, this is a heavy time that we uh you know examine ourselves as well. You know, like I was saying in the lesson I did the other day. You know, it all boils down: Are we worthy? Right. Luke twenty-one and verse thirty-six. You know, will we will we be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man in that day? You know, mm -hmm. it's all about who's trying to seek him. You know, because as we were talking about earlier, this is a day that we're able to keep through the Spirit of Yahweh by Shemal Shai, giving us the remembrance of our of our ways. But like I said, you don't you don't have a lot of our people that's even considering this, man. Right, huh. This is a chance the Lord has given us to repent, to, to get back to, you know, uh, the good graces. And Jake is taking this for advantage because here it is, you know, during this time right now, you got Jake popping a woman. You got Jake, you know, eating, they drinking, they, they're out and about. Right. They're not, they're not, they're not even thinking about you. How about Shim Yahweh Shah, man? So the fact that we're able to, to, to honor this, you know, high holiday and keep it to the best of our ability, man, that. That's a step towards, you know, the Lord, you know, a part in this, man. Yeah, that's right, man. The the, the atonement, man. Did y'all pull that uh, definition out? Yeah, we brought it out earlier. Yeah, yeah. So lucky too, man. My internet has been bugging out in the house, so I had to move locations. But um, 
Okay. Nevertheless, we know we're on here. But yeah, that's it. I mean, you brothers went, went about an hour, man. So Salaki, from be, me being late, man, it's just, you know, safe moving, brother. So, you know, <laughs> just got to maneuver, brother. You know, but um, did we bring out Isaiah 50, uh, 53? Brought that out? Uh, we can get that. Yeah, go through that real quick, man. Like you say, we just highlighting the um, the significance, man, of the atonement, the importance, man. You know, this is why you see the body as a whole is 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 going through lessons right now, bringing this information out. You know, preparing the elect for the uh, times that are coming. You know, but the point of focus is, you know, highlighting the atonement what Yahweh Shai did for us. You know how the scriptures say, according to the law, uh, Leviticus seventeen and eleven. You know that. Uh, you know, the, the, the matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Mm -hmm. I got you, Saquon. You got it? Done. This is Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. That's right. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. There you go, man. It is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. All right. And this is for this is foreshadowing Yahweh Shah, man. Because what he was the atonement. It's through his blood that we are uh, that we're made clean. You see? So tying this you now, you know, bringing out Isaiah 53, you know, you just just examine what, what you know what our Lord and Savior went through, you know, on, on our behalf. You know. Do I want to read that? Yep. I got something right quick. Just to link up with what Zaquan had read. Zaquan oh. called for in Leviticus 17 and 11. This is Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. It says, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Right? Which we know that word testament means covenant. Oh. Which that covenant is built upon the order of Melchizedek, the better promises. Right? It says, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Mm. Okay, so just as Aquan has said, this was a foreshadowing of Yahweh Shai, right? His blood being the atonement, the remission of sins, the reconciliation. Right. right. Hey, real quick, not to cut you off. Hey, uh, bring out remission. Bring that definition back out if you haven't brought it out already. Done. You want it in the uh, blue letter? Uh, get it in the... In the uh... Common dictionary. You can, you know, you can if you, if you like. Con, you I got you. I'll get it in the uh, free dictionary. This is the word remission. In the free dictionary it says the act of remitting, a condition or period in which something is remitted, a lessening of intensity or degree abatement. It says um, law, the act of remitting or state of being remitted, a, re a reduction of the term of a sentence of imprisonment as for good conduct. It says ecclesiastical terms, forgiveness for sin, discharge or release from penalty, obligation, etc. Ooh, man, discharge from uh, what? Read that part again. It says discharge or release from penalty, obligation, etc. Damn, see, discharge, you know, uh, 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 release from penalty, relief from penalty. It said. That's right. See, we're fighting to not be charged with our sins. That's a very serious thing, man. You know, to not be charged for your transgressions you committed in this life and the many other lives you lived on this earth. That's right. That's serious business, man. So who who wouldn't want to fight for that? You know, who wouldn't want to honor, you know, your how about you know, shot sacrifice, man? You know, like Jake really don't understand what you know what they dealing with, man. You know? You got it, brother. Okay, I had a, uh, another quick one before we get that. This off of what you just said. Um, this is first John two and two. It says, uh, I think uh I'll I'll read verse one then point of the two. It says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shai the uh, Hamashiach the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only. But also for the sins of the whole world, because like you said, man, Yahweh Shah, all right, he he's covering the sins of uh, of the elect, covering the sins of all Israel, you know, in the time. <laughs> but right now, dealing with the elect, and then when two thirds die and come back in the kingdom, that's when their sins will be forgiven. But that word propitiation, according to uh, Wikipedia, it says the act of appeasing or making well dis disposed a deity 
that uh, thus incurring divine favor or avoiding divine retribution. Man. So what Yahweh Shai did by you know uh, shedding his blood for us, all right, is to cover us from that great judgment that he's going to bring upon the world and bring us back, you know, uh, through us uh, to salvation, pretty much, man. Restore us back to that form of glory we once had as being the sons of God. Sure. That's that's the ruling, that's the ruling body that's going to govern the earth, the sons of God, the house of David, man. The spirits that were with Yahweh Shah from the beginning of time, you know, just just the layers of it is just heavy, man. You know, so Lord willing, you know, I say all the time, Lord willing, Lord willing we are them spirits from the beginning that was with Yahweh Shah that's doing the work on the earth now, fighting to be part of that uh, uh, governing body in the, in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. You know. But uh, yeah, you want to hit the Isaiah fifty three real quick? We can get to that, you know. Verse just, one. Yeah, start at the top. Just adding in, you know, through the Spirit, power. How about you, know, Shah? You know, kind of Isaiah chapter fifty three and verse one. It says, "Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed?" That's right. For he shall grow up before slot. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no no form nor comeliness, and when he and we when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Can somebody read that GNT NLT real quick? Uh, Same verse, verse two. Uh, Isaiah fifty three and verse two in the NLT. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. Man, that's heavy, man. The Lord came lowly, man. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, was it Philippians, the uh, the second chapter? Yahweh Shah was, was not a man of, of reputation. Right. So by that alone, you know, we see the we see the opposite coming from particular camps. You know, they're not coming in the spirit of Yahweh Shah. They're not coming in the spirit of lowliness and, and meekness. It's all about pride and arrogance, vain glory. That's not the spirit of Yahweh by Shah, man. That's right. You got it. Can I get it in the GNT as well? Yeah, you got it, bro. Um, this is Isaiah 53 and 2 in the GNT. It says, It was the will of the Lord that his servant grow like a plant taking root in a dry ground. Or in dry ground. He had no dignity or beauty to make us take notice of him. Mm. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing that would draw us to him. Damn. And I just not to cut you off, but you think about the ministry, mm -hmm. you know, as a whole, how the Lord made it where it, it, it's not this world friendly, worldly, attractive type of um, a thing. See, we, we we're, we're despised amongst men. You know, we're, vi we're viewed as being lowly, but that's the spirit of Yahweh by Shema Shah right there. He wasn't dealing, he wasn't dealing with the, the glorious outward appearance that you see amongst different men, you know? Yeah, because if I can add, because the same way that Yahweh uh, Shah pretty much drew his followers to him was just strictly off of the words. It's like how we how we are with the ministry, man, because there's nothing that we're doing that's world that's sexy to the world, man. <laughs> right. we're, we're not doing anything to draw it, draw the world in through outward shit. Yeah. We're just strictly bringing the, the elect together through the words of Yahweh Shah. All right, just as he he did to bring people to the Father when he was on the on the planet, man. Yeah, sick. We don't have to have all the glamour and glitz, you know. Go ahead, you can read on that. Verse three, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Yeah, he was rejected, you know. A man's not honored amongst his own people, roughly paraphrasing, man. You know, and you, and you see the parallels between what happened to Yahweh Shah back then and what's happening in the spirit now. Are, are not his representatives despised and rejected, right? Looked down upon, slandered. You see what I'm saying? You got it, brother. May I get something right quick, Zaquan, just to ask yep. what Because Yahweh Shah warned us that that would be the case. This is uh, John. You got it. You better go ahead. I I I'm I'm I misquoted it. 
No, it's cool. You got it. You can read on that. Verse four. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the most high and afflicted. Right, right, right. You know, he uh he fulfilled prophecy of, of being that um that uh that that sacrificial lamb, the atonement. You know, keep reading. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was yep. bruised for our iniquities. He was he was wounded for our transgressions. All right. He was bruised for our iniquities, man. Keep going. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Yeah, with his stripes we are healed. You see? Can I get a precept first Peter 2 and 24? Just to add on to that. It's through his stripes, it's with it's through his stripes we are healed. Because his first Peter chapter two and verse twenty four says, "Who his own self bear our sins, in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed." There you go, man. That's that's the, uh, you know, that's that that's the access back to the Father right there through through Yahweh Shah through his stripes through through what, what he went through. Right, can't take it lightly. You got it, bro. Yeah, Isaiah 53 and 6. Because then um, Hebrews 12, it says how we have not uh, strived unto blood, man. All right, we, what we're going through isn't even slightly compared to what Yahweh had to endure, man. So the fact that we're able to do what we're doing now, man, that's a testament to our faith and what, you know, what Yahweh represents, man. Come on, brother. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned. It's a lot here. You got it. Uh, Isaiah 53 and 6 All we like sheep have gone astray We have turned every one to his own way And the Lord hath laid on him The iniquities of The iniquity of us all Right that's the point right there man That that, that Yahweh Shemuel Shai Fulfilled prophecy of being the atonement for our sins To be that sacrificial lamb Alright He bare the iniquity of us all Go ahead He was oppressed And he was afflicted yeah, he opened not his mouth. He is bought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Right, which is filling the, the the prophecy in Matthew twenty seven. All right, when he was brought on the trial, brought on trial, he was in. Uh, he didn't say anything. You know, matter of fact, let me get that. I think that's Matthew twenty seven. I want to say Matthew twenty seven and fourteen. Bear with me. All right, it's the book of Matthew. I'm right here. Okay, you got it. This is Matthew 27 and 14. Started 13. Con. Matthew 27, 13. Then said Pilate unto him. Start at 11, Salaki. Start at 11. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Matthew 27, 11. And Yahweh stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Yahweh said unto him, Thou sayest. Mm -hmm. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. See, he didn't say nothing. Go ahead. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things that they witness against thee? Right, and it's heavy. He's at Pilate is telling you how was shy. Haven't you heard all these these uh uh these these testimonies against you? Right? The same thing we going through now. Right. Go ahead. And he answered him to uh, and he answered him to never a word in so much. That the governor marveled greatly. Right, he didn't say nothing. Right, we're fulfilling that prophecy as we read in Isaiah fifty-three, Isaiah fifty-three and seven, when he was brought before trial. This is this is what he fulfilled here, man. You got it. We can jump back. Con, this is uh, Isaiah fifty-three and verse eight. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Here you go. He was punished for us. And it says, who should declare his generation? Right? Yeah, I wish I didn't have a, a C line. You know, he didn't have any kids. Right? Go ahead. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Neither was there slot. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. There you go. Keep going. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, 
and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Right, right. So this, this adds on to what we brought out in Leviticus 17 and 11. It says that uh, thou shall make his soul an offering for sin. Right? The only way you can atone is through the blood. Yahweh mm -hmm. was the offering for whose sins? Our sins, man. And it said, that it, yet it pleased the Lord, Yahweh Shah to bruise him. Right? Can we add Psalms 116 on there in verse 15? Please. Psalm 116. Yeah, Psalms 116 and verse 15. Okay. Psalm 116 and verse 16. It says, O Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant. And the son of thine handmaid, thou hast loosed my bond. Any more? Uh, verse 17. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. You know what, Salakia? Wrong precept. Can you give me the precept where it says that um that is uh pleasant in the sight of the Lord of the death of his saints? Verse 34. It's verse 15. 15. 34, 15, or 116 and 15. Verse verse 15. Okay, God. Where you are right. yeah. But the Psalms 116 and verse 15. It says, Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his saints yeah there you go that's that's the scripture right there we just read that that it pleased the lord to bruise him you see what i'm saying think about that man this is the the, the only begotten son the son of the most high man it said it pleased the lord to bruise him and then we just read read that scripture one more time uh psalms of uh, isaiah uh the psalms uh was it 116 the Psalms 116 and verse 15, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You see, and just to think about, you know, the trial Yahweh Shai endured and then think about the trial that we're going to eventually have to endure. You know, the temptation, the the, uh, the, the hour of temptation, the sea hip. Certain brothers have to be martyrs. Whoever story, you know, wh whatever brother's story is written, you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's precious in the sight of the Lord, man. The death of saints. So th that's, it's like, you got to take on a mindset here, man. It's like, man, that's intense. God, and if I can add, the, the, the main reason that the Lord looks at it like that, because that shows that you are obedient to the end. Uh, the scripture that Otago one brought out earlier uh, in, in First Samuel, the Lord said that obedience is better than sacrifice, man. Mm. So the fact that as we're continuing to, to walk like how your house shall, you know, move, he was obedient to the end. All right? he, as I said, he didn't complain. He didn't, he didn't, you know, uh, get weak. He, he endured everything until the end. All right? yeah. he, he, he gave his life and the Lord rewarded him by, you know, raising him back up, you know, and pretty much, you know, giving him the throne on the right hand side of him. But I had a quick one just to add to that yeah. point. You got it, bro. This is Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 17. It says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, actually, let me go up to verse 16. Um, it says, And Yahweh, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. So Yahweh, you know, he's well pleased in Yahweh Shai because, as you said, you know, Yahweh Shai was obedient until the end. All right. And this is the example that we're supposed to show forth as we walk in his spirit. All right. For us, man. Okay. If we want to have our sins blotted out, we got to be obedient to the end just like Yahweh Shai was. Yeah. Strive unto the truth unto death and he should fight uh, fight for thee, right? That's it. Yep. You got to, uh, uh, you won't. May we uh, put a uh, commentary on that right quick? You got it. Isaiah 53? No. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the Isaiah 53 and 10 in the book of commentary. It reads, The prophet gloriously and emphatically states that the suffering of the servant of the Lord was ordained by the Lord uh, even for his pleasure. This was the most highest doing. He had put him to grief the house child was no victim of circumstance or at the mercy of political or military power. 
It was the planned, ordained work of the Lord power prophesied by Isaiah hundreds of years before it happened. This was the most high's victory and not Satan or man's triumph. He says yeah. here, as Paul says, it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, the most high was in Hamashiach, reconciling the world to himself. The father and the son worked together at the cross. Though Yahweh was treated as if he was an enemy, he was not. Right. Uh, let me see what else it says here. It says, this is why Isaiah can say, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And it and in and of itself, the suffering of the son did not did not please the father. But as it accomplished the work of reconciling the world to himself, it was completely pleasing to the Most High, the Father. Come on. So, like the uh, scriptures tell us that um, uh, his meat is to do the will of him that sent him, man. Right. right? You know, so Yahweh Shah's whole purpose was to complete this mission. You know, and that's why it was pleasing to the Heavenly Father. Man. Sure. That's right, brother. Good stuff. You got to be one. Isaiah 53 and 11 he shall see of the travail of his soul and he shall slot and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities yeah 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 he came to bear the the the, the sins and iniquities of the nation of Israel and also uh of, of himself right let's get that let's add that on there I got it uh Hebrews 7 Hebrews 7 and 25 it says Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost part, so like to the uttermost that come unto the most high by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. All right, Yahweh Shai being an intercessor, the mediator, right? It says verse 26: For for such a high priest became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. The point, verse 27. Hebrews 7 and 27, it says, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. See, this is speaking about Yahweh Shai, right? So it said he uh, first for his own sins, which he committed as who? It was Adam, mm -hmm. Solomon, mm -hmm. right? And it says, and then for the people's, for the nation. For this he did once when he offered up himself. He, him being the what? The atonement, the sacrifice. He was the, uh, cause when you look up, uh, there was another definition of, uh, um, remission. It goes back to, um, to paying off a debt. You know, he paid off the debt through his life. You know, you got it, bro. Let me finish it out. Well, Isaiah 53. Real quick because he that's why scripture tell you that he he took on the role of being like a uh, like a high priest because what the what the priest would do during the uh you know back in the temple they will offer up the sacrifices for themselves first and then right. they would do the sacrifices for the uh for the nation that's that's it. The, what your house did uh like you said he was you know uh doing the sacrifice for himself first because like we went to earlier all right the nation of israel is suffering from the, the fall of Adam and then the fall of King Solomon, man. Because that has affected us, you know, greatly in the times that we're in now, man. So Yahweh Shai understood that because he had the uh, knowledge of his past life. He understood the ramifications of what he did in those last and then two couple incarnations. Okay. Yeah. Isaiah 53 and 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Shit, man. Made intercession for the transgressors, you know, us. You know? So what, what Yahweh Bashim al Shah did for the nation of Israel, first and foremost, starting with the elect, is just, you know, it's just, it's major, man. You know, so... This is why we're pushing the vibration to, to, you know, to stay committed, to stay, uh, stay in the spirit of repentance, you know, constantly examining yourself, fixing yourself and walking accordingly the best you can, you know, 
because we're pursuing the second Peter. What, what does it say? Um, what manner of person shall we be? What manner of conversation shall we have? Right? Because we know that that day that's coming that's gonna burn with fervent heat, man. So we're trying to be um, we're trying to be pulled from that. If you will. We're, we're trying to be covered from that, and that's only gonna come through your house shot, man. You know, you bros got it. Uh, that's pretty much all I had. That's it. That's it, man. So lucky I was late, man. I just had had some stuff I had to handle. But uh, nevertheless, we in here, man. So edification went out, you know. All right. Keep the remembrance, man. A lot of this, a lot of this time, you know, commune with the Lord, man. Ask for forgiveness. You know, come. And come out, you know, the Day of Atonement, you know, with your head held high, man. Hey, and, and keep the faith, man. You know, it's, it's the Lord is giving us a chance to, to get right, man. So we got to take full advantage of it. Come. Let me get one more scripture. Get the scripture where it says, don't let your sins weigh you down. We can wrap with that. That's a good closing scripture there. Second uh, Ezra chapter 16, um, verse 60. Uh, sorry. I got Second Ezra, you got to go ahead up. Second Ezra 16 and 76, it says, and the guide of them, I'll start at 75. Second Ezra 16 75, be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashin al is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashin al power. Come. <clears throat> let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Yeah, yeah, balance. Right? Bro's got to apply balance, and that and I, and I starts with myself. You know, things that I got to deal with in my walk. Right, but the scriptures say, uh, "Let not the sins, uh, let not your sins weigh you down, and your iniquity, iniquities lift themselves up." Right, so you got to keep fighting, man. At the end of the day, this is a fight, We're fighting in the flesh. Right, we fight the spirits that that come into our minds. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's really a fight. So, don't give up on your how about Shemel Shai Hebrews, the tenth chapter, verse what thirty five somewhere in there. What does it say? Uh, uh, cast cast not away your confidence in the Lord. Which has great reward. Yeah. Keep keep your hand on the plow and just keep building, man. Yeah, like we read out in Job earlier, man. If I be wicked, why did I labor in vain, man? That's it, man. You wouldn't be doing this if you didn't believe. If you didn't believe that Yahweh Shai had the power to save, we read it earlier. That's like one of the first scriptures we read. Hey, the Lord's hand is not short that we cannot save, man. That's it. It's not unrighteous to forget your works and labors of love. Like you say, priest, we didn't come this far, or I tell someone we didn't come this far just to get this far. I know one of you brothers just say that. Right? We can't we came to finish. Yeah. Right? We came to finish the race, you know, to the very end of this thing, man. That's right. right. You know? So hey, that's it. I just want to add my input in there, man, through the spirit power. Y'all by Shimel Shot, man. The day of atonement, you know, fast, you know, and come out, like you said, priest, come out this thing a, a better. A better servant, man, of your help by Shemuel Shah, you know. Uh, uh, if I may add too, uh, before we close, uh, brothers and sisters could put up prayers for the uh, for the brothers and sisters in Louisiana. They got a hurricane that just touched down up there, so you know, definitely put those brothers and sisters in your prayers for the evening. Right. Come, on. come, on. we'll do. Right. Right. Yeah, so, Lord, man, this lesson was edifying. All right, we want to give all honor. Praise and glory to Yahweh. Double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone that tell us this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring our truth and sincerity to you. We say shalom. Hey, shalom. 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 shalom.